screen going here so everybody can see what I'm seeing. Welcome all of you. It's so good to see these names up here that I think I recognize many, if not all of you. There's a few that's new, but I see Hoka and hopefully Joel's there and Richard and Nancy, Terry and yeah, everybody welcome. We might have a nice small group to interact today, um, which is that always the fun part of these joy streams. The goal is uh, to engage on the topic of joy and uh, interact with you. So in case you don't know who we are, my name is Chris Corsi and this is my wife, Jen. Hi. And uh, we're glad that you're here. We run a training called Thrive which is a hands-on, relational, uh, brain-based skill training. Uh, there's three tracks. We do uh, joy rekindled marriage retreats. Um, we're very passionate about propagating joy. And it's safe to say most of us, or the two of us, have grown up in pretty low joy environments. So it's fun now to be able to download joy and start joy with our family. And as you see in the picture, our two boys, are the the recipients of the training in, in every way. Yeah. Uh, what we have now to share with them is is for much of uh, much of our story, much of what we have is is what we didn't have growing up. So for me as a pastor, as a minister, uh, that's very exciting news, especially as a father. Mm -hmm. So I hope that you'll be inspired by what we talk about today. Um, with starting joy over the holidays. And uh, quite simply, uh, as Denny and I have already said, the joy streams are uh, just a way to interact with you. Uh, the reason we started these earlier in the year was we wanted to engage pastors and leaders, uh, many who are new to the training and just trying to figure out what would it look like if I learned these skills? How do these skills apply to my staff or my congregation? How do these skills work with my family? Mm -hmm. I found as a pastor, unfortunately, what, tended, what tends to happen is my family would get the leftovers. Um, giving all of my life to the ministry and my work, I would come home tired, cranky, exhausted. There wasn't a whole lot of joy starting. And so Jen and I really want to try to uh, prevent burnout uh, and prevent some of those casualties because ultimately if your family is getting the leftovers, uh, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. So we believe uh, joy is God's gift for all of us. And uh, if you are on our email newsletter, we're going to be sending out uh, in the next, really the next couple of weeks, some new options for the Pastors Weekly in 2014. Um, so I hope that you are on our mailing list. If not, let us know and we'll add you to our mailing list. Or you could go to joystartshere.com and get on our mailing list because we are in the process of coming up with some exciting new options for 2014. But that's another topic for another day because what we're going to look at now is how to save your sanity and start joy over the holidays, right? We have Christmas around the corner, uh, New Year's is right around the corner, and I don't know about you, but for us, we come into the holidays with these wonderful ideas and expectations of what we're going to do over Christmas. And um, what tends to happen without uh, joy being a, a fundamental part of the holidays is you just try to survive the holidays. Mm -hmm. And when the holidays are done, you're exhausted, you're burned out, feel a little crispy. And you think to yourself, wow, that's not quite how I envisioned my Christmas or my New Year to go. Uh, so if you can identify with some of that, I think you're going to be interested uh, and I think you're going to enjoy what we share today. But it is fun to have my wife here because uh, normally, you know, I'm doing it or we have a special guest, but the special guest is my wife. It's fun to be here with you. So, Although I have to allow our listeners to know that uh, our kids are down for nap and so that means if I step out for a minute that they're not actually down for nap like they're supposed to be and so I might disappear for a minute and come back if I have to check on them. Yes, we do not have a babysitter. <laughs> yes, we're so winging it today. The joys of doing this means uh, navigating little people who are supposed to be napping right now. All right, so 
With that said, I would like to move on here and just jump right in. Um, right? Let's just jump in here. So I want you to think about your holidays. I want you to think about Christmas. I want you to think about basically the next couple of weeks. And what three things can you expect will rob your joy in coming weeks? What comes to your mind? All right. What can you predict will rob your joy? So, for example, for me, I would say what's going to rob my joy is if I go into the holidays exhausted and I still try to work and, and I push myself and I actually don't enjoy my family, I don't protect my time, that's going to rob some serious joy. All right? For me, I know it'll be if I expect too much from myself. If I try to get too much done, if I try to make it the perfect Christmas or... For us, it's not just holiday season, it's birthday season. Today's Chris's birthday. Sunday is Andrew's birthday. So we've got lots of additional holidays this month. So if I try to make all of the cakes from scratch and the pies from scratch and uh, don't cut myself any slack about how everything needs to be perfect, then that's really going to rob my joy. And let's say, just, just for the record, I love Jen's baking. And I love to bake. She loves to bake. These are good things. I mean, these are good things, but piling up even the good stuff will, can overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. um, so just, you know, kind of be realistic about what you can, what you can't do. Um, hopefully you have some thoughts uh, as well as you think about this. What, what can you predict will rob your joy? All right. Um, then the next question is, what can you actually control? What can you change? So for me, you know what? I can be a little more proactive and try to rest and uh, protect my family time. Um, that's one thing. I can lower my expectations for how things are going to go. I can buy something at the store instead of making it myself, even though I like to bake. It, if it's taking time away from my family and making me stressed, then it's not worth it. And as pastors, where we tend to get ourselves in a little bit of trouble is we are very busy doing a lot of good things. Um, but again, if your family's getting the leftovers, that is a red flag. All right. And uh, and again, these things we don't plan this stuff; it just kind of happens uh, with the urgency in the moment. And so, as as pastors, as leaders, we really do have we can't afford not to be proactive. Um, but let's take let's take a step back here. I want you to think about Maybe historically, what's made Christmas special for you? What is it about this time of the year is special um, for you and your family that you would like to repeat? So, for example, what makes Christmas special for me that I would like to repeat is just um, lots of family time, lots of joy, lots of food. Love food, love family, <laughs> love joy. Um, you know, and, and being able to actually cherish it when it's happening, mm -hmm. I would say that that for me is something I'm going to strive for. Anything make Christmas you pretty special? much hit all of them for me. Yeah, time with family, yummy food. All right. Time with family. <laughs> yeah. All right. So hopefully you guys are uh, thinking this through a little bit. Uh, last important thought, which Jen already kind of highlighted here, is be realistic about expectations. You know. Um, sometimes what happens is we want to do all of these good things and these exciting things and these busy things. We've got all these extravagant plans. And what happens when we try to execute all of our wonderful plans for our family, we overwhelm everybody. We're exhausted. We're not paying attention to our capacity. So too much of a good thing can actually become a bad thing. I mean, oxygen is good for us, right? Too much oxygen can actually backfire uh, and be bad for you. So. We, we want to find that balance. How do you strike that balance? Um, Jen, you had some thoughts about a Martha Stewart. Yeah, I, we're not holiday. even for perfect. I like perfect. I can't do perfect. Um, I can't even do close to perfect, especially with a three-year-old and an almost two-year-old. It just doesn't happen. If I, if I aim for it, then my time with them and my attention to them is what suffers. So, for instance, Saturday, we're having some family over for cake and ice cream for Andrew's birthday party, and my house probably will not be clean. I mean, we will have something to eat, and they will get to have time with family, and Andrew will get to be celebrated, and it won't be in a clean house. 
So I hope I hope that really resonates with you guys. We like a clean house. Like that's yes. a, that, that's a high value for us. But there's a higher value, and that's celebrating our son on his birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and while we would like to have all of our ducks in a row, going into this birthday party exhausted, overwhelmed because we're trying to do too much really isn't going to be wise. And sadly, my definition of too much has had to change because what I thought was too much, what I thought was reasonable was still too much. And so sometimes I have to get my husband here who is a better judge of what's too much for me and sometimes I'm a better judge of what's too much for him and we have to receive that feedback from the other person like, yeah, I don't think home baked pies, homemade pies is going to work this year, honey. You just, you know, or I, the house just isn't going to be clean for the party. We can still have people over, but they'll just have to deal with the mess. All right, so that's the foundation. Now, I really want to jump into kind of five ways to start joy and minimize strain, since that was where we're going today. Um, let's just jump in with the first one. Um, we're going to talk about how to create uh, the art of appreciation. Uh, appreciation is one of the relational brain skills that you would practice through the Conexus program, through the Thrive training. Uh, skill four is huge for your brain, your nervous system, and your relationships. Because what happens is um, creating appreciation actually rewires your brain, which is, for me, very exciting. Um, gratitude, you know, what are the things that you're thankful for? Um, what was joy, joy producing for you today? And remembering that joy, or um, taking the time to express some of this joy and the good things to the people that you love. These are all things, these are all qualities uh, that truly will start joy in your family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what tends to happen is, especially for us guys, I'll pick on us guys for a moment, we just kind of have this assumption that people should just know that we love them, and people should just know that we have all these high and lofty thoughts toward them, um, but we don't always take the time to express it, to say it, to look that person in the eye and say, hey, I appreciate you, I'm really grateful for you and here's why. That's joy producing, that's joy starting. Um, and so express your love in, in ways that the people you know can hear. What might be, uh, what might make me feel loved is not the same thing that's going to make my wife feel loved. Mm -hmm. And so I have to use a little bit of creativity to figure out what's going to make my son feel special here. What's going to make my wife feel seen and valued. And not just assume, well this is what I would want. Right? I went and washed the van. Doesn't that make you feel loved? Well, that might do something for me, but that's not going to do something for her. So we want to really uh, you know, pay attention to those kinds of things. And the good thing is you're, you're going to benefit, your relationships benefit. And so today, let's just open this up for a moment. Um, I want to hear from you guys. What, what is something that you're thankful for? It could be a one word. Um, what are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for family. That's my one word, all right? So for those of you who are listening on, you can type in a word to Denny, or Denny if you, uh, will be able to share that. But what is something that you're thankful for today? Let's, let's practice this. Someone, Hoka says babies. She's thankful for babies. I was thankful for the beautiful frost this morning we had. It was, it was like jewels all over the yard when the sun hit it. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> Family and health from Lucia. Health from Judy. And if you want to talk this out, just raise your hand. What else are you thankful for? Deidre's thankful for restful sleep. Oh, Amen that's good. <laughs> Especially this time of year. Yes. Loving pets from Lori. She must have seen my dogs. <laughs> oh, loving pets. I like that one. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, that, that starts the ball rolling. You know, basically it is coming up with what are you thankful for today? Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have time to go into a lot of it, but basically it does help us kind of shift more into a relational mode. And so if I'm having a bad day, I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed, uh, I'm triggered by something, I'm upset, I'm frustrated, annoyed, bothered. You know, experiencing a little bit of appreciation goes a long way. Coming up with things, what am I thankful for right now? Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find that 
that's kind of like a life jacket when you're drowning. You know? Just taking a deep breath and focusing on something other than all the stressful things right in front of me. Yeah, it's a big difference in how I approach them. So, who do you appreciate and why? You know, as you go into this season, um, who are those people that you really want to know uh, that they matter to you, and uh, why? You know, it's just one thing if I tell my son I'm proud of him, but why am I proud of him? You know, and and just just really being able to highlight certain qualities about his character, certain qualities about who he is. Um, you know, so try to be specific with the people that you know. That's just part of, again, expressing some love and starting some joy. All right. Uh, now we're going to talk about this wonderful thing called the oxytocin charge. And uh, oxytocin is just a wonderful uh, bonding chemical that your body releases. It's in response to stimulation. Uh, so one of the things about oxytocin is the result of oxytocin when it's uh, in our system, in our bloodstream, we feel peaceful. I feel calm. Uh, even uh, in studies with oxytocin, uh, people are, are feel like they can trust strangers more and they're even more generous when oxytocin levels uh, increase. So oxytocin is just this wonderful bonding uh, chemical that God's given us to be able to share. And, and a hug can uh, impact oxytocin levels, um, a touch a touch can impact oxytocin levels. And so when I think about uh, the people that I love, especially my family, um, I want those oxytocin levels high. And if you look at this image, you see um, I'm holding my son. He was having a, I, I think this was after a bad moment where he was uh, melting upset, down. Yeah. melting down, <laughs> um, which happens a lot in the stage of life. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I do frequently is I'll hold him. And I'll talk to him. I'll sing over him. It's not so much the words that he's hearing in those moments of upset, but it's just holding him and letting him, uh, you know, find some comfort that daddy's here. It's okay. And uh, it's really remarkable how that oxytocin does calm us down. It's actually been called an anxiolytic or an anxiety reducer because how oxytocin counteracts uh, stress hormones in your bloodstream. So the good thing is this is kind of God's gift, you know, relationships, interactions that are very close, intimate, uh, joyful, uh, really does go a long way. And so keep that in mind as you're, inter as you're interacting uh, with those people that you love. Skin-to-skin skin -skin contact is actually the best way to acquire oxytocin. Um, so very interesting point there, uh, especially for married couples. After a, after a hard day, just take some time to cuddle, snuggle, those kinds of things. I uh, hope that makes sense. Oxytocin is a very good thing to have. Um, even, uh, even worship and singing together actually will prepare you for the release of oxytocin. So I find going to church and having some worship time, um, singing around the house uh, with my boys, you know, those are all good things to lower blood pressure and get, uh, prepare us for some oxytocin release. Now the other thing we want to do is what we call the prefrontal shift. Uh, this is a very exciting little uh, part of uh, what God has given us the ability to do. But basically anytime uh, we want to be in the front of our brain as we might say it at Thrive. For those of you who've been to Thrive like Richard and uh, some of my other friends here, David, uh, you guys know this stuff all too well. Uh, but basically, we want to be in the front of our brain, which keeps us uh, focused on what's important. Uh, the back of the brain is, is a lot of the times where we're going to be functioning out of fear centers in terms of solving problems. How do I avoid uh, making people upset? Right? That would be a, a problem that we're trying to avoid from the back of our brain. How do I avoid making you upset so that you'll like me and want to be with me? Um, the front of the brain would be more interested on who is it like me to be in this kind of a situation, in this kind of a relationship? So we, we can stay focused on what's really important to us. And part of it is this wonderful part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, which oversees a lot of our personal preferences. So what's important to me uh, about the holidays? Uh, what is it that I want to see when the holidays are done? And uh, some might say um, you, you start uh, with the end in mind, so to speak. Where am I going? How am I going to get there? That's all frontal frontal lobe functions, which we're very grateful for. Um, creativity. What's the best solution to this situation? If my family, if my boys are melting down, 
back of my brain says, make it stop. Just make it stop. I don't care how. Make it stop. My front of the brain would say, okay, well, they're obviously upset. What do they need? How can I best meet those needs? And, and I have to admit, it's very easy to go to the back of the head. Right? When you're overwhelmed, you just want to make something stop. Make, make a problem go away. I don't care how. Right? So you probably identify with us uh, in some degree there in your own life. Uh, but goal-directed behavior, moral and social behavior, it also corrects our interpretations of other people. So I love it when um, if I'm speaking somewhere and if people have the wrong impression of me, I love it when they're in the front of their brain they can say, hey, when I first met you, you know, I kind of thought you were you were a jerk, but you know, I actually really like you. I got to know you, and ah, they're in the front of their brain. They were able to update their interpretation of me. Um, it also is a part of our brain that helps to calm the amygdala, which is that fight or flight response. Very strong uh, part of the brain. Very strong reactions. It's subcortical, and when the amygdala is running the show, it's just not relational. So it's a part of the brain we we want to, to have calmed down. Let me put it that way. And so when you think about overwhelm and you think about how if one family member's not doing well, that has a trickle effect on other family members. So what we want to do when we're in the front of our brain is be able to be ourselves, to be a, a non-anxious presence, we might say. And uh, so this frontal, frontal lobe, this front of the brain stuff supervises our most prized values. What's really important to you about the holidays? Um, those desires. What's what do you value? What do you want to see this Christmas? And who do you want to be when things go wrong? Things will go wrong. Plans don't go our way. Um, how how would we like to handle that? Um, so it, it does involve a little bit of thinking it through, so to speak. A little bit of planning and and lots of uh, lots of joy to keep that strong. Um, the back of the brain will leave us focused on problems and how to avoid problems. So let's say um, having a, a peaceful family dinner is very important to me. Um, well, you know what, I can almost predict where things will go wrong and how they'll go wrong. So when they do go wrong, how should we respond? Um, how do we want to handle those moments? Especially if it's our kids starting to throw their food at our guests, right? Yeah. That, that happens. Yes. <laughs> so how do we want to handle that? Especially if we're out at a restaurant, what's the best way to handle that? Um, and, and what I find when people start to kind of slip into the back of the brain, what helps is other people who can see that say, hey, are you doing okay? Uh, why don't you catch your breath? Um, no, let's, let's quiet our body. Uh, how is your body doing right now? Those, those frontal lobes are very invested in what's happening in the canvas of our body. So the moment I say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm breathing shallow, I'm not breathing relaxed, uh, uh, my back's a little stiff. Right, my bottom sore. I've been sitting for five hours. What, whatever it is, as soon as you start paying attention to those things, uh, the frontal lobe say, "Okay, well, let's let's steer the ship a different direction here. What do we have to do?" Um, and and again, music's just another wonderful thing for your brain, for your nervous system. So put on some of your favorite worship music. If you need to quiet, put on some quieting music. Uh, but if you're feeling like you need you need that dopamine rush, though, well, turn on some music that might give you a little bit of a might have a little tempo to it. All right, uh, let's look at electronics for a moment. All right, I really when I put this one together, I really uh, had to I felt a little conviction myself because I do like my iPhone very much. Um, the thing I don't like about my iPhone is it easily will rob my family time. It will easily hijack my attention. And I gotta say, that just I, I really don't want to see that happen for my family time this Christmas. So I had the I had the thought, what did we do with ourselves before iPhones and tablets and email and social networking? Like, did we actually have to talk with other human beings face to face? I mean, what did we do? Right? And uh it wasn't so, even that long ago. <laughs> I know you're saying something, Denny, I can't hear you. Oh, I said yeah, it. There we go. It wasn't even it wasn't that, that long, long ago. ago. <laughs> I know. It feels like it was. <laughs> so I kind of laughed at myself, like, "Wow, what, what did I do with myself before Facebook and all this fun stuff?" But basically, when I go into the holidays with Christmas coming up, and just you know, if you're overwhelmed in general, 
you have to really work to limit your your electronic time, whether it's phones or uh, email or what, whatever it is. I mean, I, I turn off all beeps on my phone so that I don't, I'm not notified when I have a text or an email. My phone would be beeping all day long. And it's all good stuff because I love the people that I interact with, but I know myself. And I know that if I don't limit those things, guess what? It will rob me. And so, you know, what are the times in your day you need to protect and uh, have almost like a phone fast or um, a computer fast, whatever it is, just, just protect your time um, as much as you can. All right, and uh, expect some withdrawal from your daily dopamine rush because when that new message comes in, when that new beep happens, you do get a dopamine rush. Um, and so the way it works is you want it more and more and more, and when you don't do those things, you kind of feel restless and uncomfortable, and you'll notice that. If I silence my phone, I, I, I wonder what's going on over there. I wonder if I have any messages. I wonder, I wonder you know, what, what's there. And, uh, protect your time. And the good thing about protecting your family time is, and resting means that you allow your brain to process what you've seen and experienced, what you've done that day. Uh, your thoughts become organized when you rest and helps you rest. The absence, absence of rest leads to overwhelm. So anytime I'm not resting, you can predict my overwhelm is going to increase. Um, exercise and diet will support dopamine levels uh, and an active prefrontal cortex. So pay attention to the things that you eat. Try to avoid those sugary foods if that's going to cause you to crash. Um, and exercise, you know, if you can get out, go for a walk, exercise, whatever, whatever that looks like. Um, Jen and I both try to exercise uh, at some point throughout our, our week. Uh, it just makes such a big difference for how we feel. Um, and, and the last point here is, you know what, your attention is one of the best gifts you can give your family this Christmas. How can you give your attention, all right? This is the best gift right here, your attention. Uh, who are those people that you want to share your attention with? Um, you know, as a, as a father, I have to say it's, it's a high value. I want my boys to feel like dad sees me, dad is with me. Um, I don't want them to feel that uh, neglect in some way where I am playing with my phone when they're trying to get my attention or with my wife, with my friends, you know, my family. These are people I really want to know that they have my attention because that's an expression of my love for them. Um, Anybody might have some thoughts on this. If you have a thought, how can you give your attention to the people that you love? Any ideas? If you want to type in something or give a shout out to us, uh, let us know here. But how can you give your attention to the people that you love? What comes to your mind? Very practically, what, what would this look like for you? Any thoughts? You well, have yeah, I'll say while we're waiting for somebody else to, um, just to even get down on the floor and play with my boys instead of kind of trying to get something done or get the dishes done. Or, those are all things that need to be done, but if I can <clears throat> just give them my undivided attention, put my phone away, shut my computer, and, and just giggle with them. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I still had little ones. I have teenagers. They don't want me to just get on the floor and giggle with them. No. Yeah, <laughs> no. That's a whole new ball game. That's a whole new ball game. So David types in um, smiles and all the joy sharing ways that are in the end of the first chapter of the Life Model book. Yes, yeah, Deidre says sit still instead of doing chores. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So Very my good. and here's someone with grown children. Um, she plans to help her son do an open house. Ooh, that's a good one. Some quality time there. Yeah. All right. So hopefully this will percolate as you as you think about this. But how you know think about how can I give my attention uh, to the people that I love? You know how can I do, give my father some attention that I know will be meaningful for him or my mm -hmm. mother, um, some of my close friends? You know what what would that look like? Um, and the good thing about giving your attention away is you always get the blessing of joy and fellowship in return. Mm -hmm. And so when people feel, wow, that was very special, uh, that's a way that you're going to be able to give some life, which actually will uh, lead me to my uh, other point here soon. 
But let's let's talk about another. You know, some of the stuff I'm I'm saying is is actually very very obvious. I'm, I realize I'm stating the obvious on some of this stuff. Um, but when we're overwhelmed, when we have so many things on our to do list, sometimes we need the obvious just kind of right in front of us. Um, at least I know I do. So hopefully uh, this will this will make some uh, make some sense for you. But one of the things is just to respect your limits. All right. You are not Superman or Wonder Woman. Uh, you cannot do everything. You have limited time. You have limited energy. You have limited capacity. Um, so how can you spend it wisely? In, in, in the Bible, we'd say, how can you redeem the time? How can you redeem your time this, this Christmas? Um, because what happens is when you're overwhelmed or you're stuck in negative emotions, your brain will crave relief. All right? We don't like being stuck there if we don't know how to get back to joy, if we don't know how uh, or if we don't practice quieting ourselves in the middle of uh, upset or negative emotions. Your brain will say, hey, I don't like this. I want relief. Mm -hmm. This doesn't feel good. Now I'm motivated to avoid these feelings uh, or these situations. So I love Ed Corey's acronym here because it's so relevant. Uh, he calls... Uh, he calls the artificial joy, artificial quieting that we use to, to temporarily help me feel better, he calls them beeps, all right? And beeps are behaviors, experiences, events, people, and substances. And so maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm feeling restless uh, or lonely and I want to go get a rush, so I'm going to go shopping and spend money or um, I'm having cravings for, for sugar, I'm having, uh, you know, hard time of year, or an easy time of year, I guess, to have cravings for sugar. It's a hard time of year to avoid cravings for sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's really no shortage of beeps that are available. It's just which ones are your uh, sand traps, so to speak. Which ones are you more vulnerable for? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I find myself daydreaming, I love Michigan because I, I, Jen and I lived in Michigan and we were married in Michigan. We both love Michigan, but I find myself, if I'm daydreaming about Michigan and going to some of the places that I just love to go, um, I, I can act, frequently say, wow, what am I craving? You know, what, what is it that's going on right now? Because I've been thinking about this for a long time. Uh, it's taking away my attention, right? Something's, something's going on here. I wonder why I'm craving this. Maybe I need to quiet. Maybe I need some joy. Um, you know, you just may notice a desire for non-relational means of regulating what you feel. All right? And this is where artificial joy, artificial quiet come into play. And these cravings mean that something needs adjusted. So if you find yourself craving these things, um, okay, there's something going on. What needs to be adjusted? Um, and so maybe I need some joyful connection with people, or I just need to quiet. Maybe Jen and I just need to quiet together. We call that uh, skill two, simple quieting. Um, one of the things I love to do is just invite Emmanuel into it. Well, wow, Jesus, I thank you for Michigan. This is a beautiful place that we love to go. But Lord, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about this a lot lately. Um, I'm, I'm having some cravings. What is it here that you want to show me? Is there something going on? Um, the nice thing about the Emmanuel lifestyle is we can have those kinds of interactions with God. Mm -hmm. We're open to it. Well, it's kind of neat. Uh, lately, I've been struggling with just kind of feeling like I just can't keep up feeling like a failure and I've been talking to God about that a lot and just saying Jesus I feel like a failure today I feel like a failure as a mom I feel like just such a failure and I feel like he says yep you are and I'm okay with that you're not you are failing to do everything perfectly you're failing to accomplish your to-do list you're failing to meet the expectations you have for yourself but I'm okay with that even if you're not and that's mm -hmm. just one of those things that catches me off guard. Wow, Jesus is okay that I'm a failure. That doesn't quite make sense, but you know that <laughs> it, it it's a comforting thought. And the nice thing about the Emmanuel lifestyle is, you know what? Um, God sees where we're stuck, and sometimes he doesn't just fix the problem, but he joins us in it. Mm -hmm. So even with Jen's example, you know, sometimes God will just kind of, yeah, you know, this is what's going on, and this is this is miserable, but I'm right here with you. And that's the game changer uh, is when we realize we are not alone, for someone is with me. It's a very biblical concept. God is with us. We don't always know what he's doing. We don't always know where he's at. Uh, so I find it very helpful when I'm struggling, hurting, frustrated, overwhelmed, 
uh, Jen and I both try to live this kind of a lifestyle. I wonder where God's doing here. I wonder where he's at. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really, really recommend uh, you, you learn more about that, uh, practice that uh, as well. And keep, keep in mind that ignoring your body makes your body mad. All right? Um, when you ignore your body, when you don't pay attention to what your body is telling you, it usually does not go very well. Um, our, our body is designed to tell us when something's wrong, when there's an issue, um, and we want to pay attention to that. I love to run, for example. I love to go jogging, but if my, my hamstring or my, my legs start to, to hurt and uh, kind of give me a warning sign that, okay, if you keep pushing it here, something's going to give, I need to pay attention to that. And uh, so pay attention to your body. You know, what, is, what are the things your body is telling you in, in terms of overwhelm, exhaustion, fatigue, uh, and so forth? Just pay attention. Uh, don't discount those signals. If you need to rest, rest. Uh, take care of yourself. And so respect the limits of those around you. If this is not natural for you, if you don't have that overwhelm skill that we train at Thrive, what will tend to happen is if you run over your overwhelm cues, it's likely you're running over other people's overwhelm cues. Um, and so if you need to rest or if you observe other people need to rest, invite that gift of hospitality to rest. And you'll find joy levels will grow uh, coming out of rest. And joy should always lead to rest. So even though I might want to do 101 holidays with my family, what's realistic and how can rest be a part of that equation? All right. So that leads to my first point here. Be realistic about your expectations over the holidays. Uh, what is reasonable, what's not? How can you give life to other people in a rewarding way? Because you know what? That's going to grow joy. How can I serve uh, people? How can I uh, give some life around that's going to just build some joy in my family? And as you give gifts, you know, uh, give the gifts that's going to make people's faces light up. It's not the spending a lot of money that's going to make somebody happy, but it's what gift is uh, conveys this is from my heart. This is something I know you, and I know this is important for you. Um, and make sure you express those qualities that you appreciate about other people. Um, and say the things you want to be sure that your loved ones know and hear. So w what is it import what's important for my mother to hear from me over this, this Christmas, or my father, or my siblings, or my wife, or my children, uh, or my friends? You know, what are those things? I just want you to know this. Uh, that would bring some joy. Joy is relational. All right? And that means that we interacting with people is how joy starts. Faces light up. Uh, and joy is contagious. You know, share a little bit of joy and watch what happens. You see other people start to share some joy. And, uh, and joy is amplified. A little bit of joy goes a long way. So I, I notice when Jen and I, if we build some joy and our faces light up, it's fun to watch that grow, but it's also fun to watch our boys light up who are watching. Uh, they're watching how Mommy and Daddy interact. When they see joy happening here, you see their little faces are smiling. Uh, and they're having some fun. And you know what? This works as well. If you go to the grocery store, and you, and you start some joy, you're going to watch the difference that it makes. Just the other day I went to the grocery store in the evening to pick up a few things for Jen, and the, uh, the young fellow checking out at the register did not have joy on his face. Far from it. And so I said his name, and I, you know, I conveyed that I was glad to be with him, and he looked at me and he said, do I know you? I said, no, you don't, but hey, I just appreciate what you're doing here. And we struck up this conversation. It was just a few minutes, nothing major, but it was fun to watch the changes in this guy that I don't even know, just because somebody took the time to say his name and convey, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you for what you're doing. This is, you know, this is great. And, you know, just, just to talk to him about what's important in his life in a matter of just a few moments. Um, you know, those are the kinds of moments I, I think brings a little bit of God's presence wherever you go and, and really can change the day for people. And last but not least, you know, keep in mind that joy grows with tender responses to weakness. So I have to give myself tender responses, uh, which is not always easy. I want to be hard on myself. But I also have to give my family tender responses to moments of weakness. So when they're tired, I don't want to expect more out of them than what they can give. Uh, or when our sons are acting out, and we want to go into the back of our brain and just make the problem stop. 
you know what would be a tender response? Let's go, let's go snuggle. You need a little daddy snuggling time. Uh, those kinds of things are what we do. Um, so I hope that that resonates with some of you here. Uh, before I, I open this up um, for some interaction, I do want to just give you the shout out. Here are some dates for next year. Uh, 2014, it even sounds so strange to say it. Um, but if you want to mark your count, I'm just going to leave this up on the screen. These are future uh, joy streams that some of you have been uh, interested about having those dates. Um, but as you think about starting joy, as you think about reducing stress and really making your holidays a, a memorable uh, time with your family, uh, what, are, what are some of your thoughts to, to this information Jen and I are sharing today? Does some of this resonate with you? Maybe, you, maybe you're already doing it. Maybe you're already doing some of these things. Um, let's open this up. Okay, Jen's going to go check on the, the boy for, uh, for a moment here. Well, Terry had actually typed in while you were um, gone, so I wanted to read what she said, not while you were gone, while you were talking. It says, okay. I'm learning yeah. to ask Jesus what I can let go. When I hear from him what I can let go, it's much easier to just let go, and I'm not so stressed. Oh, I like that one, Terry. Good for you. Yeah. Um, she also had a question. Jesus is always a respecter of our capacity. Yeah. She said that she missed something you said. When you get the feeling of just make it stop, did you say to ask Jesus to show you something bigger, or what did you say? I'm not sure I remember exactly what I said, but when I'm in uh, trying to make it stop mode, uh, that's usually a good sign that I need to quiet, and then I can interact with Jesus about what, what, does, what does he want me to know about what's really important. Because when I'm overwhelmed, I'm in the back of my head. Normally what feels important is the problem I'm trying to solve, and that's all that my, my brain wants to focus on. But what helps is as you quiet yourself, okay, Lord, um, what is it that's really important here that you want me to know? Uh, because I see this problem, and I just want to make it go away. Uh, I just want to deal with it. I just want to solve it. I just want to put all my time and energy into it. It's going to consume me. Jesus is always a good reality check for us. So, Lord, what do you want me to know? about this problem. What's important for you here? Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, um, and there's kind of two different comments kind of going on that are in the same time frame there. Um, okay. If you have like a conflict that's going on with relatives at your Christmas Eve dinner and you're in the middle of it, you know, when, how do you do that? You're in the back of the brain because you're in the middle of dinner and everyone's arguing. <laughs> What do you recommend for that? Do you deal you know, with it later, it, or can you do it then? Well, you know what I do? There's a couple of thoughts. And I've been in these situations before. They're not fun. One of them is I try to keep myself grounded and, as we would say, keep my relational circuits on, um, which would, so in, in that moment when it's happening, I might start talking to Jesus as it's going on and saying, well, Lord, right now I'm feeling frustrated. How could my, you know, here, here's what's happening, Lord. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, one of the things I like to invite people to do is just, just say, hey, time out. Can we, can we take a moment just to catch our breath? Everybody, just, can we just stop bickering for a minute, or however you might want to phrase that, um, and just say, hey, can we just stop for a minute and let's catch our breath? And when you, in a sense, you're kind of protecting people from themselves because when people are upset, they'll probably say things they may later regret, uh, especially if those relational circuits are not on. So I would have no problems first talking to Jesus, trying to stay relational, putting my oxygen mask on first, using the flight analogy. Mm -hmm. Then I would just kindly uh, say, hey, can we just stop for a minute and catch our breath? Can we stop? Can we pause? Could we, however you'd phrase it, with the point that we just need to, we just need to calm down for a moment. Then where do we go from here? Uh, and, and in a sense, you are protecting people from themselves. They need to quiet, but they don't recognize they need to quiet. So, be the lead. Yeah, just take the lead on that one. Good answer. All right, Henry says sometimes the holidays expose unforgiveness and other broken relationship issues. Do you have any comments on that? Well, yeah, Henry's right on. They <laughs> they do. Part of what I would suggest. It, well, if I'm the one that I realize I've got some some issues with some of the people there, I always talk to God about what he sees. 
And so if I'm if I'm upset at you know a family member that I find is have done something hurtful, um, what I see and what God sees might be different. So I'd say, God, Jesus, what do you want me to know about how you see this person? What I see is A, B, and C, but I'd like to know what you see, and uh, and and how how would you like me to how would you interact with this person right now? Because forgiveness flows from pe seeing people the way that God sees them. So without that peace from the start, what will happen is the relationship gets smaller and the problem will become larger. And we want the relationship to be larger than the problems. Uh, so that God sight skill is is crucial. Uh, just seeing some of what God sees as as a first step. Yeah, good question. David Corbett has said, soaking in instrumental worship music, even for a short time, can be a great calming and quiet process, and listening to what he has to say and then writing it down in my prayer journal afterwards. Yeah. So that's what he's doing. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Thank you, David. I like that. That mm -hmm. instrumental worship music, taking the time uh, to get some of those thoughts out. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. It helps the. It really does help the brain when we're able to find words to explain what we feel. So journaling is very good at uh, helping us to find those words to explain what we feel. Get that left and right hemisphere synchronizing a little bit. Otherwise, we have the upset. We don't know why we're upset, or we have all the information, but we don't have the feelings to match it. So, David, I, I think you're onto something there. That's good. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts or, or even plans for how you, you want to start uh, your Christmas time with your family? Anything that will keep those joy levels higher? Um, maybe there's something here that I didn't mention that is worth mentioning. So I invite you, if you have some thoughts on that, please. We'd love to hear them. Yeah. Priscilla says, I think some of the family relations today are based on patterns of relating that were established when we were children, remembering that we have changed our roles as we get older and what those roles are to look like are helpful. That's, a, that's very good. Um, one of the things I like about the, it's part of the, the frontal lobe, the ventromedial cortex. One of the wonderful things about this part of the brain is it helps to update. And, and so it might say, you know, in, in my, in my uh, maybe a dynamic with how I relate with my father or my mother, um, my gut reaction might be to relate to them out of an old way of relating from when I was younger. That's used, probably not very helpful. Um, one of the great things about the ventromedial cortex is it helps us to update according to a current situation. So I can, it basically says, okay, Chris, you're no longer in a, in a five-year-old body and you're trying to keep mom and dad happy because they're having a conflict. Uh, you're now 39, as of today, you're 39, and in this situation, you've got a lot more resources. So here's who it's like you to be. And that's a big difference. That's a huge difference when we're, when we're having those kinds of family dynamics that might, it's very easy to go back, um, and our brain doesn't want to update, maybe, because there's pain there, or there's, there's a history there, there's all kinds of, could be all kinds of reasons, but ultimately, it's okay, I'm, I have a lot more resources and capacity now than I did then. And uh, how, how can I handle this in a way that I'm going to be proud of when I look back on it, uh, if that makes sense. So, yeah, that, that's, a, that's an important point. So we do get into these dynamics, and it's very easy to fall into those dynamics with family or even, you know, with community and so forth. So uh, what is it you want to see when you look back on your Christmas dinner or that Christmas family time, whatever it is, what is it you would like to see? Okay. And, and how can you work with that? Huh, let's see. Can you hear me? It's telling me I have something weird going on. I'm good? Okay. It's yep. a, David yep. says um, to watch the length of time for various aspects of the get-together and switch it up so there's quiet time, so a nap, maybe even a walk together, sitting quietly by the fire, reading separately or together having a look at old pa family pictures, board games, singing, and playing instruments. Those oh, are like great that. ideas. Thank you, David. And I think Those in the old days, they all used to sing, sit around the piano and sing, and, you know, that was what they did because they didn't have TV movies yeah. to watch all the time. Great. That's <laughs> we right. bring that back. Go caroling. <laughs> yeah. That's right, caroling. Hey, that's good. It's singing. 
you know, those are building such uh, <laughs> David still does memories. It. Good job, David, oh, even off key. <laughs> nice. All right, David. So, David, I go. should unmute you, and you can sing happy birthday for us. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm going to blush. Thank you, David. That's good. That's good. All right, Deidre says, we enjoy playing games together with our children, but we're all passionate, and it never ends well. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> How can we maintain joy without it getting com competitive or just plain crazy? Well, you know, that's a great point, Deidre. I mean, one of the things is when the energy starts to get amped up, that's a good time to take a moment to rest. Um, part of the, the interactive quieting skill that we train at Thrive, which is a skill 15, is how do we keep going at high energy levels without it going over the top? And when you've got competitive uh, dynamics, which I can more than relate with, um, part of it is how do I still be myself at higher energy levels and then remember what's important and quiet and then climb energy levels and, and quiet. And so part of it is, especially as us parents, we kind of have to show the children how to do that. And so when you see those energy levels climbing, let's take find a fun 30-second quieting activity that everybody can do and then play and then okay time for another whatever that 30 second quieting activity would be um, and, and even before you go into the time saying okay guys what's important here what is it that's what what's the rule we want to have because if you win and I lose that's fine but if you shame me in the process that's not going to leave us all feeling good mm -hmm. so maybe some ground rules for the kiddos might 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 help just what's really important here what do we want to see uh, because, you know, winning and losing, okay, but what, what's more important than that? And that's what you want to help the kids recognize and identify. What's actually really super important that we want to have here as we play this game? I just got what a weird idea. idea is we do um, right. games yeah. that get competitive, too. I wonder if you did, like, halfway through the game, everybody rotate seats and take over that other person's position, you know, and then it, it doesn't become all about me winning. It's... Um, yes. I don't know where that came from. So <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. I think that's a great idea because ultimately it causes people to think through a little bit. Uh, you know, hey, someone else is I'm going to be in your seat here pretty soon. Yeah. Like, you know, I need to <laughs> watch myself. It's like musical chair games. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Any other thoughts? There's some good suggestions, good, good questions here. Any, anybody have any other thoughts about just Keeping those joy levels high over the holidays can be such a stressful time. She's, uh, Terry says, when my children were growing up, I tried to remind them to be kind, and they learned to be better sports that way. Mm, good. Very good. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. Good thoughts here. All right, let me just talk uh, about a few resources because ultimately this we're focusing on today, obviously about Christmas and the New Year. Uh, but you know what? Everybody's a lot of people's going to have uh, New Year resolutions, and if you're like me, they usually would go for about a week, and then you know then they don't go anymore. So we've got some helpful resources here that might actually help keep those joy levels growing in uh, 2014. One of them is the 30 Days of Joy for Busy Married Couples. You know, Jen and I wrote this because, very simply, we have a lot of friends, we have a lot of people in our lives that would love to maybe go to the Thrive Training or, or do something. They just don't have time. They don't even have time to go to maybe a, a Joy Rekindled Marriage Retreat. So they needed something that they could start. And so we wrote this book. It's very uh, just simply 30 Days of Exercises designed for about 15 minutes a day. And, uh, you know, it's a great practical way to start joy. We tested it ourselves before we released it, and it was amazing how much more resilient I was with the kids just for that, that month where we were being intentional every single day. In fact, we probably need to start it yeah, again so just because <laughs> it's a tough season. Yeah. And um, just how much better I handled the overwhelm. I mean, nothing about the circumstances changed. It was just how I handled the circumstances. It makes a great Christmas present. Too. Yeah, great Christmas present. Uh, what actually also makes, I'd say, a great Christmas present is Joy Starts Here, the Transformation Zone. Uh, we, you know, we wrote this book for, for groups to go through and start joy. And so there's a lot of great information and examples and stories in this book. 
but every chapter has Bible studies, exercises, and assessments. So the cool thing is before you do your study group, you know, you can go through those assessments and kind of see how you're doing, and then after you go through uh, the study groups, you can gauge, okay, how am I doing on my joy or my pseudo joy? Uh, how am I doing on quieting or, and so forth? So Joy Starts here is just great, uh, something you can bring to your family, your church. Uh, it's a great way to start joy, mm -hmm. very literally. Um, some of you are pretty serious about wanting to learn the, the 19 relational uh, brain skills, 19 protect, gentle protector skills, we also call them. And so we've got uh, some wonderful training coming up in 2014 in March, the end of March, the 24th through the 28th. Uh, here in East Peoria, Illinois, we have a three-track training event as well, July 14th through July 18th. And so, basically, this is uh, this is your fire hose experience on building joy and learning a lot of these skills. Uh, it's designed for bonded pairs, so not everybody uh, can attend unless you basically have a bonded partner because the exercises are so designed for building joy. Which doesn't have to be a spouse; it can be a sister, brother, mother, father. Close your friend, friend, prayer, prayer partner. partner, basically somebody you, you trust, somebody you already have an existing bond with, mm -hmm. uh, because it will establish a strong bond if you don't have one. Um, but we also recognize not everybody can attend Thrive, and so uh, there has just been a lot of creative effort put into what's now called Connexus for a Thriving Community, and so for churches and groups and families who say, okay, I'm going to start, with, I'm going to go through Joy Starts here, but I want some next steps. Well, the icing on the cake uh, is some of the modules that Ed Corey and Jim Wilder and David Tackle have put together so that you can continue the momentum within a community context. So the, the thing I love about Connexus is I don't have to have a bonded partner to be able to go through this. Um, they, they've designed it so strategically and carefully so that um, communities can go through it. It's it's a blast. The training's excellent. It's, it, this is life-changing stuff. So if you want to bring this into your church, you want to start this in your church, Connexus is the way to go. Uh, highly, highly, highly recommend. It's a great follow-up to the Joy Starts yeah. Your Study. Yeah, it is. It just it keeps, uh, keeps that momentum going at an entirely new level. Um, some of you have been asking about the Joy Starts Here event. We are actually working on getting the online viewing going. So we'll just keep you privy to that. Uh, we're excited for uh, to get that information out there. Some of you have expressed interest in having more small groups. I'm looking to do more uh, small group kind of consultation and, and taking the training to another level as a pastor, as a leader. And so if you're interested in some of the smaller groups, give me a holler at Thriving Today at Yahoo. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you want to learn more information, you know, the thing I love about uh, the ministry and, and what uh, my co colleagues and I all have available here is just there's a lot of resources. We really want you to have the information and, and the material as you want to apply this to your own life. And so visit, uh, you know, go to the go visit our websites. We've got uh, tons of excellent teachings by Dr. Jim Wilder called Jesus in Mind. Just unpacks a lot of the theory and where is this in scripture and what does this look like for my life. Uh, he's got MP3, just 30 volumes of teaching available. These are excellent resources. They make great gifts. So with Christmas around the corner, I would highly recommend uh, passing some of that on. Just a big picture of how does this apply for me. Uh, and go to Joy Starts here. There's a lot more information about our training. Um, but you know, this is the last Pastors Weekly of 2014. 13. Or 2013. I've got, got next year already on my already. mind. I know. Wow. That's anyway, strange. I just want to say thank you. Uh, this has been a fun year. We're excited for the changes coming on the horizon. Uh, you'll hear more in, in some upcoming newsletters and so forth. But we just want to say thank you. May God richly, richly, richly bless your uh, Christmas and New Year with lots of joy. Mm -hmm. And I want to give a shout out to Denny. Denny, thank you. You thank you, you make Denny. you make these happen. You're so welcome. we appreciate you, and uh, yeah, may, I think we need God to sing. Bless all of you. Have you had anybody sang Happy uh, Birthday to you yet? No, no, didn't get to it yet this morning. Ah, yeah. so. uh, okay. Well, this is being recorded, so I won't do it. But <laughs> maybe later.
<laughs> Before well, we please. sign off, though, I did have one quick question along all the yes. happy birthdays coming up from um, oh. Bonnie in regards to your new 30 Days of Joy. Um, how is it different from the one-year skills book? Just like if you have a short answer. Good question. Yeah. Um, Bonnie, basically the 30 Days of Joy, um, we kind of put it together for people who have not the Thrive experience in mind, people who haven't been to Thrive. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of a great uh, it's an introductory, introductory tool. people tool. who haven't been yeah. through it before, but having written the program and gone through it ourselves, it's also just a joyful refresher for those who have been through it, yeah. um, but it's definitely more introductory than the than the year long skill guide, and it's specific for married couples. So there's ways that we're trying to deepen your intimacy, your your marriage bond um, that you can't do in a in the year one skill guide because it's designed for any bonded partners. Yeah. So basically, if you're married, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, <laughs> With the with Thrive Skill Guides, we knew there might be prayer partners or friends going through it. There's just certain things you just can't do uh, with the exercises. Yeah. So. All right. Great answer. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Everybody have a great day and a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank right, Merry you. Christmas. Bye. Bye.